Welcome to Metalacto. Today we are going to discuss most important virus and that is the adenovirus. In this lecture, we will discuss the different aspects of the adenovirus. So let's start. First of all, we will discuss the general properties of the adenovirus. So first one is the genome. The genome of the adenovirus is basically double-stranded DNA. Double-stranded DNA. Okay. And the shape of the double-stranded DNA is basically linear. Linear in shape. Okay. Second is the shape of the virus. The shape of the virus is basically icosahedral. Icosahedral shape virus. Means 20-sided. Okay. And third is the Adenovirus is basically non-enveloped virus. Okay, that is most important. Non-enveloped virus. It means that that virus doesn't take any cell membrane from the host. Okay. And fourth one is the antigen. Okay, you will see the 41 different antigens. It means that you will see 41 different serotypes of the adenovirus that is the most important 41 serotypes because the serotypes is actually decided on the basis of the variations in the antigens okay you will see 41 different serotypes of the adenovirus and last most important features that is the fibers that are actually protrude from the adenovirus so you will see the 12 different fibers in the adenovirus okay if you see here here is the center will be the double stranded dna and outside you will see the presence of the capsid icosahedral and after that you will see the different fibers and these fibers are 12 in number that are actually protrude from the adenovirus two most important function of these fibers first one these fibers actually helpful in the attachment of the virus to the host cell that's the most important function first one is the attachment of the virus attachment of the virus to the host cell and the second is the these fibers will act as heme agglutinin in case of adenovirus that is the heme agglutinin actually they will agglutinate the rbcs okay that is the second most important function of these viruses important aspect of the adenovirus is the human adenoviruses human adenovirus cause the sarcoma in case of rodents okay these serotype will cause the sarcoma in case of rodents but these serotypes will not cause the sarcoma in human that's the most important difference that how adenovirus cause sarcoma in the rodents okay if we discuss the transmission of the adenovirus so first of all the first mode of transmission is the aerosol droplet droplet that is the first actually these droplets actually present in the air and they transmit from one person to the other okay second is the oro fecal root they will actually transmit through the feces and to the mouth okay and last most important is the direct contact to the conjunctiva that is the third most important transmission of the adenovirus here are basically the three uh, transmission of the adenovirus okay next is the epidemiology so basically adenovirus is endemic worldwide that's the most important thing that is endemic means constantly present as a specific area that is endemic okay but the outbreaks happens especially in case of military 
in military you will see the outbreaks of the adenovirus but how because in military due to the close living conditions of the soldiers that is the more most important source of uh, outbreak of the adenoviruses okay so basically different serotypes of the adenovirus cause the different disease if i say that first disease that is the respiratory disease respiratory disease that is actually related to the adenovirus so serotype will be 3 4 7 and 21 serotypes of the adenovirus cause the respiratory disease upper respiratory tract infection and the lower respiratory tract infection second is the kerato conjunctivitis conjunctivitis okay so basically serotype will be that is the 8 and the 19 serotype of the adenovirus will cause the keratoconjunctivitis specifically epidemic keratoconjunctivitis inflammations of the cornea and the conjunctiva okay next is the hemorrhagic hemorrhagic cystitis that is the that actually caused by the serotype 11 and the 21 serotypes of the adenovirus will cause the hemorrhagic uh, cystitis inflammations of the urinary bladder and the bleeding as well and last is the that is the gastro enteritis okay specifically infantile in case of children specifically less than two years old children and that will actually cause by the 40 and the 41 serotype okay that's most here are basically the different serotypes of the adenovirus will cause the different diseases okay if we discuss the replication cycle so first of all rep, uh, adenovirus will attach to the host cell through its fiber because fiber actually help in the attachment of the virus to the host cell okay and first of all this virus enter into the cell and uncoating after uncoating you will see the release of the dna okay now this dna will enter into the nucleus so first of all this dna will enter into the cytoplasm and after that it will enter into the nucleus basically this is the nucleus of the host cell now this dna will enter into the nucleus okay first of all we will see the early processes then we will see the replication of the genome and then we will see the late processes first of all this dna will transcribe into the messenger rna okay that will convert into the messenger rna with the help of the host RNA polymerase because host RNA polymerase will transcribe the messenger RNA from the DNA. After that, this messenger RNA will enter into the again cytoplasm because you will see in the cytoplasm, this, this messenger RNA will translate in the cytoplasm through the ribosome. Okay. Now, after that, this messenger RNA will convert into the enzymes that is actually the translation you will see the from the messenger RNA you will see the synthesis of the different proteins and the enzymes are actually the proteins now these enzymes very helpful in the replications of the viral genome okay after that due to the these early processes early messenger RNA early protein synthesis or you can say early enzyme synthesis after that you will see the applications of the dna viral dna now you will see the synthesis of the viral dna through the viral encoded dna polymerase that will actually happens in the early processes okay now after replication or of the viral genome after that you will see the formation 
from the replicated DNA, you will see the formations of the late messenger RNA. Late messenger RNA. And from the late messenger RNA, again, it will enter into the cytoplasm. Okay. From the cytoplasm, you will see the synthesis of the uh, proteins, specifically capsid proteins. That will actually happen in the late processes. So here basically, first of all, you will see the synthesis of the early processes, messenger RNA and enzyme. After that, you will see the synthesis of the late processes, messenger RNA and the different protein. In first step, you will see the synthesis of the different enzyme. In the second step, you will see the synthesis of the different proteins. After that, now our two most important things have been ready. First is the viral genome, that is the DNA, and second thing is the capsid. Now these will assemble in the nucleus and after that this cell will burst and the release of the different adenovirus that's the most important features adenovirus will not bud from the host cell they will release from the host cell only when the cell burst okay next is the pathogenesis basically adenovirus will affect the mucous membranes or mucous epithelium that's the most important thing they will actually affect the mucus membranes so actually in our body you will see the different mucus membrane you can see the respiratory tract respiratory tract okay and you can also see the mucus membrane in git gastrointestinal tract and you can also see the mucus membrane in the conjunctiva Okay, here are basically the different mucous membrane actually present in different system of our body. Okay, so basically adenovirus has ability to do two things. First, they can lyse the cell. Okay, when the cell lies, then the adenovirus release. Okay, second, they can do the latency. Latency in the tonsils. So basically in our body you will see the most important ring that is Waldeyer's ring. Waldeyer's ring in our body. Okay. You will see the different tonsil. So first most important tonsil is the pharyngeal tonsil. That is actually present at the pharyng pharyngeal tonsils. Or you can say that tonsil is actually also called the adenoid tonsil that is the first thing second is the lingual tonsil lingual lingual tonsil okay that and third is the that are actually present in the pair is the tuber tonsils and last is the you will see the palatine tonsil palatine tonsils so they are actually present in pair so here are basically the four most important tonsils so actually adenovirus cause latency in these tonsils specifically adenoid that's why we call the adenovirus because adenovirus first isolated in 1953 from the adenoid tonsil or you can say pharyngeal tonsil that's the most important thing okay if we uh, talk about the immunity, so basically you will see the formations of the neutralizing antibodies in our body and the immunity will be lifelong immunity in case of adenovirus. Okay. If we discuss the clinical features, so most important first of all is the upper respiratory tract infection. So basically in the upper respiratory tract infection, you will see the pharyngitis pharyngitis or you can say pharyngoconjunctival fever that are actually upper uh, infection in the upper respiratory tract infection and you can also see the respiratory disease respiratory disease in the respiratory disease acute respiratory disease you will see the four most important feature you will see the first one is the fever 
in the respiratory the second is the you will see the coriza runny nose okay and you can see the sore throat okay and you can also see the conjunctivitis here are basically the four most important symptoms that are actually re related to the respiratory disease fever coriza sore throat and the conjunctivitis next is the lower respiratory tract infection in the lower respiratory tract infection you will see the bronchitis or you will see the atypical atypical pneumonia pneumonia okay and third one you will see the hemorrhagic cystitis hemorrhagic cystitis the most important you will see the dysuria difficulty in the urine and the hematuria blood in the urine so here are basically the two most important uh, symptom dysuria and the hematuria blood in the urine and last is the that is the infantile gastroenteritis in the gastroenteritis you will see the non bloody diarrhea in case of children that is why it is actually called infantile gastroenteritis so those children will be less than 2 years age in which you will see the non bloody diarrhea okay if we discuss the lab diagnosis how we will diagnose the adenovirus so basically first one is the pcr through pcr we can detect the adenovirus second is the cell culture through the cell culture we can also detect the adenovirus because uh, replication of the uh, viruses actually happens inside the cell that is actually we do the cell culture okay and last we can also do the serology test we can detect the antibodies in the patient. If we discuss the treatment, there is no antiviral treatment in case of adenovirus. No treatment. Okay. Uh, last is the prevention. So, in the prevention, you will see the vaccine. Okay. You will see the live non attenuated. Attenuated vaccine you will not weak the virus in case of that is the most important thing live non attenuated vaccine against the 3 7 21 serotypes and that vaccine is actually given to the people especially military soldiers in the enteric coated capsule because if this vaccine is given directly then the acid of our stomach will destroy these virus so that why it is will be actually and caught it in the capsule here is the presence of the live non attenuated adenovirus it is not actually given to the civilian it is especially for the military soldiers of the army so that's the most important thing about the preventions of the adenovirus and you can also do the preventions uh, by uh, hygiene measures because when some patient comes and you check the patient and you check the eye of the patient after that the second patient comes uh, after hand washing you will check the second person so it means that the adenovirus can transmit through the medical staff from one person to the other person due to unhygiene condition so here are basically the different preventions of the adenovirus if you still have any question regarding to the adenovirus you may ask in the comment section thank you so much